Hi everyone and welcome to the very first Brave Moms conference called Peace in the Middle. My name is Kristen Lemus and I am just so excited that you are joining us today and over the next few days as we come together as moms who want to encourage you and speak to you right where you are at. I have heard from a lot of moms recently that they are really struggling with fear and anxiety. And I know that struggle. I know what it's like to have to deal with that. But God just started putting it on my heart to gather some women who have some experience, who have been there before, and who understand what it's like to be a mom with little ones all the way up through uh, grown adult kids. We have some grandmothers who are going to speak to us, some empty nesters, some moms with teens, all the way down through the littles. And um, we just have some things that we want to share with you to encourage you. At Brave Moms, we know that God is so for us. And it is really our mission to encourage moms. We just want to be a wealth of, um, or a source of just rich encouragement for you right where you're at. And so I am just so excited and so honored to get to uh, share these women, these speakers with you and let you just hear from them, hear from their hearts. And hopefully it is something that um, just really blesses you and encourages you. So again, my name is Kristen Lemus. I founded Brave Moms several years ago. We started doing small groups and we've grown and I have a podcast now and just my heart is so passionate for encouraging moms. So I'm so grateful that you would join us and come alongside us with this. And our topic for this conference is peace in the middle. That means something different to everybody. Peace when you are um, in the middle of your toddler having a tantrum, or peace when your preteen is a little hormonal, or peace when you're in the middle of a pandemic, or something is going on that you cannot control and fear and anxiety wants to come in and take root but we just wanna offer you a lot of hope. So as you're listening to the speakers during the conference, I would love it if you would um, find them online and follow them. We will share who they are and where you can connect with them. They're amazing women who um, almost all of them have their own unique ministries or ways that they're serving and giving online so you can connect with them. We also have a Facebook group that I would love for you to join if you feel like you want some uh, conversation during the conference. You want to connect with other women. Maybe you have a prayer request. So if you go to the Brave Moms page on Facebook, you can find the Brave Moms uh, community group there and just request to join. We'll get you in really quick and then you can start um, chatting with the other women who are going through the conference and sharing your heart and um, any prayer requests you can put in there as well. Um, also, we have a Spotify list that um, we created for you with all of these different worship songs that we felt like just um, brought peace and just uh, promote an atmosphere of peace. And we would love it if you would spend some time, even before you listen to the speakers as they come that you would just um, prepare your heart. Even if it's just a simple prayer, just asking God to open your heart and give you ears to hear and that you would um, just have a, a soft spot to be able to uh, learn what God wants to teach you and share with you. But the worship songs would be great all throughout the day, not just for the conference, anytime that you're feeling like you need some encouragement and some time alone with God and for him to just speak truth over you and you can enter in and praise him and thank him for all that he's done. So then I just want to talk to you about peace for just a minute and really the the thing that began stirring in my heart for this whole conference and it really started for me several weeks ago when all of this stuff started going on in our world and I was feeling my own sense of anxiety and um, I had some health stuff going on and kids stuff going on and just all these things seem to kind of crash together and make the world just feel big and scary and overwhelming and I had this moment where you know I knew I've been doing brave moms for all these years and God has taught me so much about overcoming fear and taking my thoughts captive 
But in these moments when we're like, okay, God, I know all the right things to do, but I need something right for right now. I need you to speak to my heart right now. And one night I couldn't sleep and God just kept putting Psalms 23 on my heart. I'm like, okay, great. I, I have memorized it. I know it. I'm going to go through and I'm just going to um, say the scripture to myself and go through. And so I began and I said, the Lord is my shepherd. And I just felt like God quickened in my heart and just said, just stop right there. That's all you need. And so I just began to meditate on that. The Lord is my shepherd and think about what that meant. And I begin to imagine myself as a sheep needing a shepherd and how helpless they are without their shepherd. They don't know where to go. They don't know what to do. They don't have an ability to, um, you know, make sure that they have the food they need. If they, you know, eat through a field, where do they go next? And uh, the shepherd is the one that takes care of them. He leads them and guides them and protects them and provides for their needs. And that just blessed me so much in the moment. It was so what I needed to hear. And as the days went on, I just began to dwell on the Lord as my shepherd. And then finally, I felt like God released me a little bit to go further into the scripture. And the very next verse is, I shall not want. And another translation says, I have everything I need. So connecting the two, it's the Lord is my shepherd, so therefore I have everything I need. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. Everything I need is provided for me by my good shepherd who loves me and cares about me so intimately. But then I even began to think on it more and I thought, you know what, no. It's not just that I have all the things that I need. It's not just that I have food. It's not just that I have clothing. It's not that just that I'm going to be financially taken care of during these crazy times. It is that because the Lord is my shepherd, I have everything I need. He is everything I need. Because when I put my attention on him, when I focus on him, when I give him my heart, he takes care of everything else that concerns me. And that is such good news. I can't tell you the the peace that flooded my heart when I heard that word over me in that moment. The Lord is my shepherd and he's everything that I need. And so if I just take my eyes off of my circumstances and what I'm going through and the frustrations and the hardships, and I just put my eyes on him, then there's peace because he is the prince of peace. He is peace. There's no peace outside of him. He literally is peace. And so when he comes, when you, you know, bow your heart and and have this posture of you are Lord and you are above everything else and I'm going to seek you, I'm going to seek your face, I'm going to worship you, I'm going to praise you, then he takes care of everything else and he meets you where right where you're at. And so with that in mind, that is the the heart of this conference. We want to usher in peace by praising the God who takes care of everything that we need, who is everything that we need. You know, the scripture goes on to say that he lets me rest in green meadows and he leads me beside streams. He's so sweet, right? He renews my strength. So he's going to do that for us during this conference. I know he's going to renew our strength. He guides us along right paths, bringing honor to his name. And even when I walk in the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. So in this scripture, you know, David wrote this psalm and he was saying, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And then he goes into all of these things that the Lord does for him. When he, when he has made the Lord, Lord of everything, and he's declaring, you are my shepherd. And then he goes through all the things that God does for us as a result of that. And then David, again, he t- turns the finger and he points it to himself and he says, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So he's making a choice there not to fear because he has this understanding now and it's in his heart. He knows that his good shepherd, his God, 
His Prince of Peace is with him no matter what. Even in the darkest night, the hardest place, the roughest thing that you could possibly go through, God is there. And so we get to point the finger at ourselves and say, because I know these things, I will not fear any evil. I know you're with me, God. I know you are right there in the midst of my day. God, when I'm feeling frustrated and overwhelmed and I cannot get the strength to meet my kids' needs in that moment, or I am so burdened by figuring out how we're going to pay our bills, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to choose not to be afraid, not because I have this power, but because you're with me and you're a good God, and you're going to take care of me. And then recently, the night, well, let me tell you the next scripture, it says, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. The enemy would like nothing more than to bring fear against you during this conference. And I want you to know that um, we are praying for you. We have people who are praying for you right now. There are many people who um, maybe don't even know your name yet, but we love you and we care about you and we are praying for you. We are seeking God for you. But you have a real enemy and he is the one who wants to make you afraid. He wants to come against you and tell you that you should be afraid that God is not with you. But here's the thing. In all of this, God prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. And recently, God began speaking to me about this scripture, and I felt like he just asked me one day, what do you get to eat at a feast in the presence of your enemies that the enemy cannot have, that he cannot take from you? And as soon as I felt like he asked the question, I felt like he answered it and said, it's fruit. So when you are seeking God, and you are walking in his ways, and you are following him, there is going to be good fruit that comes out of your life. Even if you mess up a hundred times a day, you still, you love your kids, and you are pouring into them, and you are helping them learn, and you are helping them to make good choices. That is sowing. That's planting seeds. That is doing something that is going to produce fruit. And you get to sit down in the presence of your enemies and eat that fruit one day. You're eating fruit from your life and, and the enemy cannot take that away from you. So be encouraged to continue to plant good fruit in a place of trusting God and knowing that he's with you and knowing that he protects you and provides for you when you keep your eyes on him. All right, that is what I wanted to share with you. I hope that that encourages you and just sets the stage for all of these amazing speakers who have a great word to share with you. I cannot tell you how many of them have been um, messaging me and texting me and calling me and just saying, I'm so excited about this because God gave me this amazing word for um, these women right now. And so we're so glad you're here. Please reach out if you need anything and um, let's get started.